Charlie Munger, a famous billionaire investor and vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, believes that the first $100,000 are the most difficult to accumulate. He is not alone in this belief. Many people who have grown their wealth believe the same thing, and the same thing is often said about achieving the first million. The next one comes much faster. Before you know it, you have $200,000, $300,000, and $400,000. Once you reach the million dollar mark, the second one is right around the corner and seems to take a fraction of the time as the first. Those of us who believe that our wealth is rising more slowly than we would want, but why does it get easier? Let's look at why it takes so long to reach $100,000 and explore some things you can do to speed up the process so you may become wealthy years sooner. Welcome to Cashflow Canvas, where we assist in the education of people about money, personal finance, and investment. If you want to improve your financial future, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. One challenge that many people have is the process of actually starting to invest. Investing can appear to be a low priority, and it is frequently placed on the back burner before you know it, you're scratching your head, wondering how you're going to retire, and how many people you know who would start investing if they only had more money when they start making more money they'll invest. Saying you'll invest when you have more money is like saying you'll put wood on fire just as soon as you have more money. You don't invest because you have too much money when it starts producing heat. You invest because you want more money. Risk is another typical justification. Most of us know a coworker or friend who believes that investing is too hazardous and hence avoids it totally, as is the case with many other aspects of life. When the finish line appears so far away, it's easy to put something off until later. Achieving the first 100000 requires you to do the heavy lifting, which means the majority of your money must be contributed by you. Once your portfolio reaches a sizable amount, compound interest begins to work. Even if the returns as a percentage do not necessarily increase, the returns in dollar amounts do. For example, if a $5,000 investment earns a 10% return in one year, that's only $500 and it's hardly noticeable. $500 could easily be made by working a few extra hours once in a while. And when a thought of this can appear, then $100,000 investment earns a 10% return. That's $10,000, and that's a great start to replacing your salary. Once it reaches $1 million, a 10% annual return is $100,000. Dollars, that's a large amount, that is much more than the $10,000 that many people earn at their jobs. And seeing this huge growth is exciting. People say that once their portfolio reaches $100,000, they can really notice the progress of their investments. Once the snowball starts rolling, the rate at which it grows accelerates as your portfolio grows to a large amount. Incredibly pleasant, and the excitement can hasten the process, to put it another way, because the returns are large you'll start seeking for ways to develop your portfolio faster. You might hunt for ways to boost your income so you can contribute more to these investments. You could also look for strategies to increase your earnings so that your progress can continue. Instead of going out to eat and spending $100 in a couple of hours, you'll think twice because realizing how powerful compound interest is will make you more carefully consider your purchases. This is because you'll realize how much that $100 will grow and continually reward you if it's invested, and it will be harder for you to spend it. If you spend $100 on meal out, that money is gone forever. If you invested that money, it could reward you $10 the first year, $11 the next year, and $12 the following year. Of course, $100 isn't a lot of money, but it's the habit of saving those counts. 100 in various categories on a regular basis will add up as you become wealthier, you have more options and this will become more and more obvious when you have $100,000 saved. There are many things you can do that someone living paycheck to paycheck cannot if you have the opportunity to take another job with a higher salary. A potentially higher income or more room for advancement, but the pay isn't consistent you have the savings to take that risk your job might pay $50,000 per year. But an opportunity arises it's likely to pay $100,000 or more per year, but it's commission only. This type of danger is not feasible. Perhaps you've always wanted to start a business, but have never had the cash or money to do so. Your new firm could bring you millions of dollars, but if you can't get started, it's a missed opportunity. Perhaps an incredible opportunity in real estate presents itself, and you have the option to purchase. A home far below market value, it will be a significant risk, 
Nevertheless, if you have money saved up, this may be a risk worth taking. Yet, it is not always desirable to cash out your investments. The truth is that you have the option if you need to, or if a once-in-a-lifetime chance presents itself. When you have less money saved, you are much more constrained in what you can accomplish, which adds to the idea of being able to take advantage of more possibilities. When you have more money, you can take on more risk with your investments if you see potential in a stock. You have extra money, and it will not financially wreck you if that investment fails. Hopefully, you will still have other assets. Someone with little money saved may give you with an opportunity to invest in a new company venture, and you will not go bankrupt if it does not work out to put money into something like this if you're still working on the $100,000 milestone. There are some ways to accelerate the process. Because the majority of these funds will be money you personally contributed, you should focus on increasing the amount you're saving. This is the best way to accelerate the process in order to save more money on a regular basis. You must increase your income. This can be accomplished by taking on a second job on weekends or a couple of nights per week where the extra cash can be deposited directly into savings. Consider starting a side business that would bring in some extra income. Be careful when spending. On superfluous goods, do you really want to spend $100 on a dinner out? Or would you rather save that money for a special occasion? Remember that watching pennies like this is only temporary until you reach your goal, and then you can relax a little bit. Avoid large car payments for vehicles that are simply unnecessary. Because these expenses are common reasons why people never reach $100,000, let alone a million dollars. Once you become acquainted with the process of saving and investing, it will be easier to just keep doing what you're doing by the time you obtain a substantial amount of money. You'll be used to finding ways to earn extra money. And put that money aside, you'll also be used to being more deliberate with your purchases and really considering whether they're necessary or if it would be more rewarding to put it into savings. Furthermore, you'll be comfortable with taking risk in the process of investing through different market cycles, and you may even learn how to take risks. Make the most of them according to Charlie Munger. After you reach 100000 you may ease off the throttle a little. Although the first million is the next milestone, it becomes easier because the majority of your investments will most likely be the product of compound interest, rather than money you need to go out and earn next. When you're worried about the difficulty of expanding your net worth, remember that it gets easier, more pleasurable, and more rewarding over time.